however, with the Z Modeler brush, part five. Hopefully this will be the final part. We do have quite a bit to do. I have to finish the neck, put the tuning machines in. I want to texture it with some wood grain and that kind of stuff. The frets and possibly the strings. I've been thinking about it and I need to get rid of this head and put one in that doesn't have any holes in it because we don't really need the holes. I don't know what I was thinking when I did that. As you can see, I've already loaded some images in Spotlight that I may use. plan to use some of them. Let's just get rid of that and we'll delete hidden VZM or the Z modeler brush and close. Just close that. Very nice. Now duplicate the model, go to the initialize palette, set the resolution 111 and Q cube. Move that down. Let's turn on transparency so you can see the cube. And transpose move tool. Hold shift while I bring it up there. To insert multiple edge loops and set the specified resolution to one. That'll draw a line right down the middle. Use the up arrow key to go to the top sub tool. I don't know if you can see this, but it's narrower at the bottom than at the top. Hit Z to bring the controller online here, or visible, I should say. I'm clicking on the head of the guitar, the reference one, and that's going to be the pivot point, so it's going to expand from right there. It makes it pretty handy for being able to put your reference where you want it. Right now I'm just lining up the neck to show you just how off I was. <laughs> well, not necessarily. Let me dim this down here. You can see the size of my guitar compared to this one with regards to the neck and the guitar itself. And you can see that the top up here is about the right width, but the bottom is not. Shift Z to get rid of all of it. I need to separate. Bring it all back. Mirror and weld and X. There we go. Shift Z. This control here sizes them all the same size. This one sizes them proportionally to how they are in relation to each other. This one here will make the one that's chosen the largest. Right now the blueprint's got a red square around it, so that's the one that's chosen. Just thought I'd explain that. So you need to get rid of the controller, go into the subtool palette and merge down. Oh wait, cancel. Well points here. Merge down. Okay. And see if it really welded. Looks like they're holding. Control, mask this off, invert the mask. Holding shift, I'm going to stretch this up higher. We're going to clear the mask. Under tool, poly groups, group by normals. <laughs> Geometry, under tool, crease, crease poly groups. It's a little better. Now make the frets. Z modeler brush. Go into Polygon Flat Island, pull this out and hit Control to break it off. There we go. So silhouette as well. Split hidden. And this we're going to duplicate. You have to increase the geometry on this because you need to transfer some texture to it. Go to the Geometry tab and turn Smooth off. And we're going to divide it up 1.8 million. That's probably good enough. Turn off polyframe. Doesn't look very straight. Okay, we need the Z, the spotlight controller, and turn the opacity down. Spotlight radius up. Hit Z to get rid of the controller. Now B, S, T for the standard brush. Turn Z add off. Okay. Just a simple matter of transferring the image. Shift Z to get rid of the spotlight. 
Now, choose the duplicate, go down into the initialize palette, and turn the resolution down to 1 and Q cube. Transparent and transpose move tool. Now I'm going to mask off one edge, and instead of using the top circle by the white circle there, I'm going to use the center one. This is cleaner geometry than doing it the other way. It's so annoying that sometimes I just want to use a mouse because the pen, you carefully let go of it and it springs back or springs into a different shape, bigger size or smaller size. Or... It doesn't always seem to be that way, but maybe it's like when the model has a lot of polygons, especially does that. Clear the mask. Shift. Oh, I guess I'm getting control. Shift. I mean to do that. Not yet, anyway. Now, control shift and just keep on doing it all the way up. We need clip curve and control shift, turn on poly group. What that does is every time you use the clip curve, it will create a new poly group on the face that you clip off. Delete hidden. And go into dynamic subdivision, come back out, and oh, yes, back into Z modeler brush, go to polygroup, polygroup all polygons, six sides. So, what this does is it's going to give us a color for every single side. What we can do is separate a side like that. We want the ends, go into geometry, crease, and Crease. So we go into dynamic subdivision. We get toothpicks. Okay, now we got the other other side. Same thing. Crease. So now we don't have toothpicks. We've got matchsticks. So now there's one more thing. We could use slice curve to put an edge loop in on each one of these instead of having to do them all one at a time. I was trying to think of a way of doing this. Space bar and reposition, kind of big. It helped though, it made it more harsh on that head. Awesome. Okay, you just do a mirror and weld. It looks like we have not all that much further to go. Let's clean this up a little. Let's go into edge mode and choose delete. If you remember, delete will only delete edges as long as they leave behind a quad. Otherwise, it won't delete. Let's come out of dynamic subdivision mode so we can focus on this better. Maybe I already took that one out when you weren't looking. Yeah, that's not going to leave a quad. What am I thinking?
Mm, not too bad. This might need more creasing or recreasing. If I sound somewhat asthmatic, I just was trying to blow the dust out from behind the refrigerator because it's just not cooling. There's an accumulation of years of dust. It's that allergy thing that developed when they was a croissant baker. It's not as bad as it used to be, though. Thank goodness. There were two bakeries that I worked at uh, different times. I think I was paid five dollars an hour. This is back in 1981 to 84. And five dollars, you know, it's okay, but I think minimum wage was three and a quarter or somewhere in there. To make it more worth my while, they gave me five dozen. It was a dozen each chocolate, ham and cheese, plain raspberry, and the day old croissants we turned into almond croissants, which were pretty awesome. So then I would have a friend of mine sell those up at Western Washington University, or Wasted Washington University, we used to call it. And then we'd split the profit. It was pretty cool. After I moved from Bellingham, I ran into this woman in Olympia that when she found out I was the croissant baker, she said, Oh, your almond croissants used to give me oral orgasms all the way to Huxley College. I thought that was a pretty cool compliment. Huxley was an environmental college that was on the campus at Western Washington University. Quite an interesting school. There was also... Uh, another college just on the edge of campus called Fairhaven. And that's what the Evergreen State College in Olympia was modeled after. So it was like a miniature, little tiny version of Evergreen, or prototype of Evergreen. It had to have been far smaller than a tenth of the size. Let's get this show on the road, as Bowie recently said. Well, fairly recently. Never seen it do that before, where it should be all the same poly group. It's not. Why? Originally, I started to do this method of attaching the head to the neck of the guitar, and got sidetracked, and I did it a real roundabout way, and I thought I'd show you how I was going to do it originally. 
I'm just going to use bridge, two holes, and it's a simple matter of ta-da! There you go. And then what you'd want to do is insert Alt, get rid of that edge loop, and then come in here with stitch, st stitch these together like so. And there you go. Okay, here we go. Now, Shift Z brings the spotlight back. I forgot to change it to the standard brush. B, S, T. Make sure the Z sub is off or Z add. I don't think the polygon count is up very high. So we're going to divide it all. And we need welded points. That's better. 2,900, 10,000, 38,000, 151,000, 601, 2,400,000. ,000. Better save. I'm just going to hit quit save. Move, hold control while I tap on the model, or it masks everything else off. Put that poly group a very small brush size. Hmm. Never seen those wispies before. Back to the Z modular brush and turn spotlight off. Shift Z, hover over an edge, space bar, and unweld. Oh, that's right, it's rather large. Let's walk down. There's no subdivision levels. Well, we just go back in time and turn on polyframe. Let's turn these all into the same polygroup. Under polygon, unweld polygroup island. So do that, bring everything else back. So now they're separated and the poly painting won't bleed through to the other side if all goes the way that it should. Let's once more divide up. We do weld points again. 2.351 million. Slightly different than the last time. Oh, slightly different results too. I see an edge loop that's not there. Insert. There we go. Now, let's try that again. Welding points. Let's close some of this stuff. Hold points. Drop this. Draw a size down. See if we can get those points closer. If you turn up your point distance too far, and some of your points that are real close together will merge when you don't want them to. It's possibly detailed spots on your model. Pulling control. There we go now. Inverse the mask. Inverse the mask again. Try the weld points again. Dynamic subdivision. There we go. Interesting. What this needs is love, sweet love. It's the only thing just too little of. Grease. Wild. Polish by features a little bit. Repeat. And repeat again. Zoom out just in case there's some... Oh, I turned it into a mandolin. How would you like to model a mandolin? Okay, undo. We're ready to divide up. 155,000. 620,000, 2.40 million. There we go. Oh, and I forgot about this part. There we go. And then B, S, T, RGB on, Z add and sub off. Shift, Z, and we've got our texture back. Awesome. There was wispies the last time, and now it's nice and clean. So, if you were wondering why would anybody want to unweld points, the reason is, is because when you unweld points, ZBrush is creating an extra edge loop around the perimeter of the unwelded edges. And also, I don't know if they put creases or what, but it holds the geometry in place, so 
you'd think that it would come apart if you unwelded it, right? I mean, that's my thought when I first heard of unwelding, and I thought, why would you want to do that? But it doesn't do it that way. It unwelds it, and then it keeps it in place, so you can actually divide your model up into more different sub-tools or polygroups, and they don't bleed into each other. That's awesome. Yay, success for once. Now, we're going to do the other part of the guitar. Inverse the mask. We need a different type of wood for the neck. We'll just do this. I guess we should unweld that again. Drop down. Didn't lose our subdivisions this time. I don't know why we did last time. This we will turn into one polygroup. And then see modeler brush, unweld polygroup. And it is polygroup island. Mission to post multiple subdivision, delete or freeze the subdivision levels and try again. I don't know about freezing. Let me quick save first. When I first tried freezing, it had iffy results. It might have improved it. Bring it all back and freeze. Okay. Separate that out. There we go. Here, let's do it this way. Separate that and that. Mask this off. Bring everything back, inverse the mask, and we're ready to rock and roll. Get Z back and pick this blonde wood, whatever kind of wood it is. I brought these other guitars in, thinking that I might just use them. Like so. Z. And turn this off. Let's turn the model around. And B, S, T. Need to go up in subdivision. Let's see, unfreeze. I think it's probably a good idea to do that as soon as possible after freezing it. Do what you need to do and then back out of there as soon as you can. Otherwise, if you start changing things too much, I think it confuses the unfreezing process. I figured that was one of the reasons that I had failures in the past or it got stuck trying to come out of it or crashed or whatever. I can't remember exactly what happened, but I didn't like the results. <laughs> and it always made me afraid to try it again. Of course, that was my old laptop that I started ZBrush out on, and it was 32-bit. I tried running the new ZBrush on my laptop recently when I was away from my desktop, which is 64-bit, but my laptop is getting pretty old, and it was having a hard time. It was just not performing the way my desktop does. I'm so spoiled now. We'll hold Control and tap on the model. I want the back. Undo that. Tap on the back. There we go. Uh, Let's do it this way. Control Shift X. And again. There's still something there. There we go. Z. Z. One of the textures there. Bring Z back. Get the blueprint out of here. Get that out of here. This out of there. Z again. It's really fun to use Spotlight for poly painting. The results are pretty phenomenal, usually. I always forget how fun it is. And then wonder, why don't I do this more often? Let's turn it this way. Let's see if we can kind of fake it here. I should have put a depth mask on it. Oh yeah, see? I'll do it on front and back. Let's bring Z back so I can see where the position is like that. Z again. Then go into the brush palette and under depth, turn on depth mask and then, can't remember, inner depth like this. Is that going to do it? It's not perfect, but it really helps. Awesome. You can set the depth mask the other direction. One direction will let you go right up to the edge like this, like a, I can't remember the names of angles, obtuse or whatever, but an overhanging angle, one will mask for that, the other will mask for an indent angle, if that makes any sense. One angle would be like the crack in that angle, or the peak of the opposite, if you can follow what I'm trying to say. 
let's bring everything back. There we go. Now we just have to do the neck. Bring the controller back here. Might as well use this wood. Like so. Z. Yeah, let's do it this way. Control shift and click. Then mask, control shift, click, control click to inverse it. I'm going to find a different texture because this is just too spotty or whatever. Import. <laughs> now there's a guitar for you. That's pretty sweet. I've seen a different picture of that same. I'm pretty sure it's the same boat. That's what gave me inspiration to doing Arbuckle Saline Solution that one time. I don't know if you've ever seen that picture I did years ago. Not very high quality texture. Yeah, that's pretty small. Let's see if we can find a better one. I think I can avoid the planks. Let's turn on spotlight radius. Z. Those frets are just slightly too big. Oh, and also we need to assign materials to this. And also, what I should have done is made these screws. Let's control click, then auto groups. That's under tool, poly groups, auto groups. Then under brush, auto masking. Mask by poly groups. It's a slider. Turn it all the way up to 100. Then when we take our rotate tool, and I guess I should click on it, huh? Maybe it's connected to other poly groups. Let's see here. And I'm out. Not turning that up. Hold control, click like that. As Paul Gabriel says, subtlety is realism. So might as well put each of these screws slightly different than the others. Let's turn off the poly frame. Let's undo that. There we go. Back to rotate. Shift Z to get rid of the spotlight. Shows the wrong one again. Oh! I'm in move mode, aren't I? It was skewing it. Back to move and move this back in place. Back to rotate. No, no, no. Rotate, not move. Yeah, better. All right. Control Shift A. Undo that. That gear has got a lot of different polygroups. Yeah, man. Let's get it all back and then group by normals. Let's increase the angle. Down to poly groups. Group by normals. Decrease the max angle. Group by normals. Regroup by edges. I haven't ever used that one. No. Merge stray groups in just in case. Oh, hey. Oh, that makes that easier then. Okay. Now, grow all. Oh, cool. That time, they came over separate.
All right, now, clear those. Interverse the mask. Hang on here. Let's do it a different way. Oh, that's better. Like so. There we go. There we go. That's right, I need to get out of that mode. Control shift A, control click, control shift click, control click. Okay, now. Okay, I got most of the way through it and ran out of memory, so Hypercam crashed and tried recovering the file with a program for repairing video, and I could play in Media Player, but in Sony Vegas it didn't play the image, so I've had to do this over. So, I've got a Q-Cube and Z-Modeler brush, insert edge loop, so a little bit thick still, and this out. Holding shift after I start pulling. Switch to slide. Back to insert. Shift. Mesh, single poly, hit the Alt key, holding Alt, insert multiple edge loops, set the resolution to 6, and poly group, tap. Poly group, and let's set it to poly loop. Split and triangular center. Alt. Back to Q mesh. Poly group all. Decrease. Holding Alt. Edge loop complete.
control shift X. Okay, this is skin shade for material and RGB and color fill object. Reverse the model there. First of all, let's go back to the guitar. Append transparency. Dual deformation size. Move transpose. Okay, now click on the color palette, the color swatch. That isn't the right color. Let's try that. Oh, I know, because it didn't see the guitar, it was just seeing the bridge there. So when I was dragging it over onto the guitar, it wasn't actually seeing it. I needed to have the guitar selected in the subtool palette, and then it would have seen the colors of the guitar. I'm going to darken it a little, go back to the bridge, turn transparency off, and color fill object. Control shift click, get out of move mode. Control shift X, control shift click and drag. Now color fill object, clear that mask. See how it's leading over into this part of the model? What we need to do is go polygon, unweld. It says polygroup island. This island. Now, turn this back to white and color fill object. Now, it's all the same polygroup. Then we'll unweld polygroup and color fill object. Bring everything back. Now they're not bleeding into each other. One more thing. Clicking on end will give me a list of the subtools, except it won't show the subtool that's currently the focus. You know, the one that is selected, just show you all the others. So I don't want the head to be the same color as the fretboard, so I'm gonna separate that. Okay, B, S, T for standard brush. Set it to RGB with Z add off. Bring the controller back. Where are you? And spotlight radius. Bring that up. Let's see. Not really liking that. Let's go to texture, import. I'm sure there's a better way of lining up the grain. I want to redo the body of the guitar. These aren't that high quality of images. I could just do the side guitar probably.
using a modeler brush. Shift Z to get rid of the spotlight. Okay, only one thing left to do, I believe. I recorded it a few days ago, but it crashed, so I realized I didn't have it in the tutorial. We're going to put the markers on the fretboard, and I just used the circle that I used for the guitar body. Make poly mesh, press Control Shift, and grab the Select Lasso. Because the Select Lasso has a special functionality to it that the, the other selection tools don't have, and that is you can select out edge loops. So if you click on an edge, it'll do that, which is really cool. Do something like that. Delete hidden, and let me change the poly group. There we go. Just to make sure that it is an actual mesh. <laughs> so, next, I'm going to key mesh poly group island. Could have done flat island as well, or I'm going to pull it out further than I need to. Okay, ZBrush crashed, and I paused the recording. Here I've pulled out a three-dimensional shape from that flat plane, and now we need to find the guitar. And originally what I did was, oh yeah, I made this into a, a brush. And it gave me problems, so I ended up just using the transpose move tool. And But we'll try the brush approach again create insert mesh and this is going to be new back to the guitar got symmetry on turn that off and let's make sure that it's going to run parallel to the surface here if you first draw out with the transpose tool then the insert mesh brush will draw out orientated to how the transpose tool was drawn Okay, and I do believe that is a wrap. I'm not going to do the string, sorry. Maybe some other day. Maybe by the time this video comes out. <laughs> okay, I'll show you how to put strings on this thing. At least I'll do one. <laughs> This here needs to be creased. We don't want it to be round like this. We want it to be square. I believe this is called the nut. Going to crease, edge loop complete. So this so we can see if it's doing what we want. That looks okay. Going to insert multiple edge loops and we're gonna set this to 12. There we are. Multiple edge loops and we're gonna set it to one. So we can have one down the middle here, like so. These are going to be the channels that the strings are going to lay within. Tag these faces here. Extrude. That should be good enough. Mask that off. Inverse the mask. Let's just go ahead and duplicate this. Go down to the initialize palette and Q cube. Okay, I'm going to clone this. And grab the clone. Group by normal, duplicate it twice. I've chosen the middle one. Snap those to the corners, holding shift. First, take off solo mode. Select the top one, and then move it up to the top. Control shift, let's turn solo on. Turn double on. Delete hidden, go to the middle one, turn. Here and weld on on Y. Turn local sim on. Mirror and welding in Y will give me points to click on so that I can hide the model. There we go. Now I've got those separated. Delete hidden. Now go down to the bottom subtool. Turning on double. Delete hidden. Come out of solo mode. I mean move transpose tool. Draw mode, go down to Tool, Subtool, Merge, and Merge Down. Merge Down again, mask off the top one, Control W. These need to be three separate poly groups. There we go. Go into Brush, Create Insert Mesh, New. We go into Stroke, Curve, turn Curve Mode on, As Line, turn Bend Off. 
Then we need to go into Brush, Modifiers, and turn Weld Points on, and turn up the Curve Resolution. Probably doesn't matter, because we're not going to be doing any curving. Test it out. And there's a string. Let's save this brush, in case the brush crashes on us. Save as Insert String. Go to our guitar, and we can delete that cube. Turn transparency off. Start here, go up. It's a little big, so we're going to bring the draw size down, click on it. Go up and do a stroke, and lock start, lock end. Bring the draw size down a little bit more. Dynamic subdivision mode. So that's how I would make a string. Low E string should have wound wire, but I'm not going to get that into it. And this should be up over the bridge like so, and then bend down first, get it in place. It's wanting to move the whole thing, okay. Let's mask off the top. And it's moving straight over. Maybe if I turn bend on. That didn't work, so undo. Okay, what I'm going to do, turn bend back off. I'm just going to delete, go into the stroke and curve functions, delete. That deletes the curve. Oops, I got it snapped over there. Let's do it again. I don't have snap on. Can't see where I'm going to. Get close enough to where you see a red line come out. Continue on. Same with this side. Go to Stroke, Delete Curve, down here, and rotate, snap it to this view. So, let's get rid of this. Control Shift A to grow all, so that's all hidden now. Delete hidden. Mask off this part of the string. Inverse the mask. Go into Rotate. I should blur the mask first. Blur mask. Let's clear the mask. Inverse. Go into Move mode. Stretch it out. Clear the mask. This is way too big of a string for the high E, but oh well. Draw mode, control, shift, A. Inverse, move mode, shift, Mask it's there. Rotate. And what we can do is clear the mask and go into draw mode. And delete hidden. Now we need to go find helix. Go into initialize palette. Frame the helix so we can see it. Radius. Drag that off there like so. Coverage. Let's close this window. Open up Offset. Thickness. Back into Offset. Okay, make poly mesh. Back to the guitar. Insert. Pick that one. Under Tool Deformation Size. Scale it down, move it up, deformation palette, rotate it along the X, rotate it 90 degrees, there it is. Rotate, right circle to center it. 
rotate it around like so. Scale, scale it down some more. Move. Uh oh, I guess we deleted the guitar. Or I did. Arg. Let me go back to this here, and we're going to append the guitar. Out of solo mode. Helix. Rotate the inner circle. And back to move. Deformation palette inflate to match the string here. Mirror in Z. I'm just trying to show you how I'd try to solve this. Rotate. Move. You already got the picture a long time ago. Something like that. I didn't want this tutorial to go on forever. The string's too big. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Rotate. And over. Mask off the top section. Inverse the mask. Stretch like so. Unmask. Size. Shift. Move it back. Shift. Rotate. Click on this circle so that the white circle transfers down to the bottom there so you can use it from that end. I think you get the picture. Shift. See, that's what happens if you try to use the wrong end. You need to click on the outer circle, transfer the white circle up to there. Mask. Inverse. Move. And that's how I would attempt to do that. And good luck. <laughs> The wider string should be on the other side, and there should be a thinner string. Basically, that's one way to do it. If you enjoyed, and look forward to seeing you on further tutorials in the future. Happy ZBrushing! Mm -hmm.